you're the director of conversational um, design at Salesforce, and you're giving us insights about conversational AI at Salesforce. Today, uh, we'll hear how you manage this with um, the teams, how you build up teams with yeah, conversational AI teams. And yeah, I'm, I'm happy that you give some insight about it. And Voice Tech Hub is, is, is a platform, of course, to promote people like you who have big experience in this field. Yeah, let's Thanks start. so much for having me. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. So uh, what is your role exactly at Salesforce? So like you mentioned, um, I lead conversation design as a team in practice at Salesforce. Um, we are a centralized team. Um, and part of that is to sort of establish conversation design as a center of excellence, a team that can scale across our entire product suite um, and help other product teams who are trying to build conversational solutions using the Salesforce platform approach it in a standardized and rigorous way, um, as well as helping our teams that work directly with customers on their own implementations of our conversational products, particularly the Einstein Bot Builder. So Einstein Bot Builder is a text-based chatbot um, builder that is uh, produced by Salesforce. It's a homegrown system that we sell across the Salesforce platform. And many of our, our customers use it for um, various use cases, ranging from service um, and customer support to sales to even marketing sometimes. Um, and my team helps teams internally who are trying to create let's say a chat bot for um, service cloud, for example, uh, which is our flagship product for the customer support industry, um, whereby uh, users of service cloud might want to be able to search for a knowledge article or a help article using a chat bot inside of Slack or Salesforce, um, we would be the ones, the team that would help them produce that language experience. Um, part of what I sort of help uh, the team think through is what is our sort of common strategy across product areas? How do we approach different product leaders and product teams and explain to them, um, you know, how can we potentially source uh, intent data for what it is that you're trying to do? What are the intents that we should try to serve in maybe the first round of release versus the second, third, and fourth rounds of release? Um, should the bot take the first turn in the conversation or should the user? Mm -hmm. um, because each of those interaction patterns will be slightly different. Um, and what is all of the sort of um, technological or infrastructural um, requirements that are needed underneath the hood to be able to support that. So if uh, you want to look up a knowledge article, how do we make sure that we are referencing the knowledge article um, object in Salesforce um, with uh, the technology under the hood? So that way, if you want to pull information, you're pulling it from the right place. Um, mm -hmm. All of those strategies are things that my team uh, leads with each product team, um, and we apply a consistent approach across the product ecosystem. Yeah, that sounds that sounds very interesting. So you really build the product um, in, internally, also to be consistent um, based on on the inputs you have um, from from also the customers internally and externally. Right. Yeah. So. How, um, I mean, how, which roles do you have in your conversational AI team? Sure. Um, so it's interesting. The way I framed it at Salesforce is everyone on my team is a conversation designer. Um, and I think part of how I've framed it is because the team is still sort of new. Um, so Salesforce has been around for over 20 years. And within that history, uh, conversation design as a practice has only existed mm -hmm. for maybe two and a half. Um, so I started the, the team about two and a half years ago, and it started with just me. I was the only conversation <laughs> designer for all of Salesforce. Uh, now we have many conversation designers who report to me. Um, but I think that in terms of how we wanted to, I think, approach the practice, um, 
when it comes to resourcing, for example, um, I think we want to stay lean um, and be able to rotate as quickly as possible in a unified fashion. And in order to do that, the way I've sort of framed the role is um, each person is indeed a conversation designer, but I've framed it as sort of full stack conversation mm -hmm. design, mm -hmm. whereby we don't have a separate role for someone who does the information architecture and then someone separately who does the conversational copy or the language design, as I like to call it, or someone who is separate who does the AI training. Every conversation designer on my team does all of those things. Um, and part of that is because I think each conversation designer has the context to be able to look at the bot holistically. Um, yeah. And it it sort of, um, I think, speeds up the process, if you will, in that we don't have to have a handoff between different team members in order to do each of the pieces, the IA, the language design, the AI training specifically. Um, in addition to that, every conversation designer on my team also does their own usability testing. Um, ideally, we switch off uh, with different conversation designers testing each other's yeah. Yeah. experiences. Um, so that's the way that each role is framed, um, but under the, the sort of moniker of conversation design. Okay, that, that sounds really interesting. And in, in my experiences, so I have a lot of customers asking me how to build up the conversation design yeah. team. And this is a topic which is not really, yeah, you don't really hear or read a lot about mm -hmm. it. It's uh, still in, in, in progress, in, in, in development, yeah. how to do that properly. And my, my experiences were, especially at the customer side, they asked me, yeah, how should I then implement the team? Should I have a, mm -hmm. uh, is it, is it assigned um, or aligned to the digital department or right. should it be in the innovation department or should it be it, its own department? And for sure, yeah. in the big, bigger companies like conversational uh, b banking companies or, or, mm -hmm. or companies, um, yeah, like banks, uh, like telecommunications, they have their own bigger teams, like in Switzerland, 50 yeah. people or more. Um, what are right. your experiences there? Um, my experience is it is important to have a chatbot or voice conversational owner somebody's mm. in charge of it because otherwise yes. Yes. you won't have any decision on go live or on productive versus staging or anything yes what is your experience yes i agree there i do believe that there needs to be at least a product order or a product manager um someone who is sort of leading the effort to, like you said, go to production. Um, and at what point are we going from staging to production? What does our release timeline look like? All of that, I think, is necessary. Um, I think, and I think there's, I, I sort of have a distinction in my mind when it comes to, are you a uh, an organization who is producing a chatbot or a conversational experience for your customers? Or are you uh, an organization that is producing a builder mm -hmm, so that way your exactly. customers can build experiences because the it will look a little different um yeah. so if you're the the former where you're creating a singular sort of experience uh you're not creating a builder but you're creating a conversational experience for your customers um yes you're going to need a product manager or a product owner to, owner to sort of ship it to um to production um and then Ideally, I mean, I think in terms of where that sits, um, it sort of depends on how your organization is structured. If there's a product management or a product sort of, um, you know, organization within your within your organization or, or your, you know, your your company, that um, very likely I would expect it to end up inside of the product organization because effectively mm -hmm. it is a net new product that you're delivering for your customers. Um, sometimes I will see the product owner maybe sit in marketing. Other times I've seen them sit um, in engineering. Um, yeah. That's less frequent that I've seen, um, but Either way, there is a sort of one person whom is who is responsible for delivering the experience to the customer, um, and that potentially some of the the team members who are helping to produce the experience, whether that's a conversation designer or a data analyst or a business analyst or an engineer. Mm -hmm. 
um, that those roles end up sort of matrixed uh, in a way that they're not necessarily directly reporting to the product owner or the product mm -hmm. manager. Mm -hmm. um, they can be, um, but that all of those roles sort of cross-functionally come together to deliver the experience. In yeah. the latter example, um, which is the case for Salesforce, where we're delivering a platform rather than, I mean, we, we also deliver singular, uh, you know, conversational yeah. experiences yeah. Um, in the way of Slack apps. But um, when it comes to the builder platform, um, again, the builder itself is a product, so it lives within the product ecosystem. Um, but as far as conversation design and where it should sort of sit, um, I mean, I chose to put it in the design organization um, because A, it has the word design in its name, um, but also because I think um, our process is very fundamentally rooted in design as a strategic uh, means of thinking about product development, mm -hmm. uh, where we're thinking experience first and what is the user trying to do linguistically here and how do we support that from a language perspective. Um, I would say that if we weren't in design, um, probably engineering, honestly, um, because what we deliver is very different than I think every other product designer within Salesforce mm -hmm. UX. Mm -hmm. um, you know, historically within Salesforce UX product designers, they'll produce a spec and they deliver that to an engineer and then the engineer will go and build it and then check mm -hmm. back with the product mm -hmm. designer and say, hey, you know, does this fit what you were trying to do? For us, because the bot builder is live in code, um, when we build a bot inside of the bot builder, it's in code. There is no spec that we hand over to the engineer. We hand them mm -hmm. code. Um, and so there's a sort of code review um, and then they check in the code. Um, but that's sort of one of the things that I think distinguishes us from um, as conversation design from the rest of product design in that when we hand over a deliverable, it's it's in code. We don't need a developer to sort of do extra um, unless we wanted to do something very custom that didn't, you know, that feature doesn't exactly exist yet in the Einstein bot builder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I, you know, I, I think that there is some relation there, but when it comes to our process, I think, uh, you know, UX design in particular, um, we'll sort of look at it and, and feel its familiarity, even mm -hmm. though the medium for which we are designing um, is different. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting. I've also seen the role of conversational AI in the in the departments of analytics and automation uh, and companies. So yeah, it it is like a really mixed role. This conversational AI, you need to know. Um, a lot about design, a lot about linguistics, also about AI, machine learning, natural language processing. So it will be still a, a very, yeah, very uh, interesting field to work in because you have a lot of yes. different um, skills you need to have, right? Yeah, and I think design has historically been a very interdisciplinary field. Um, many UX professionals draw from all kinds of different fields to inform their design process, their design approach. I certainly think the same goes for conversation design. Not everybody on my team is a professional linguist. Um, I have a background in linguistics, as do a couple of my other conversation designers, but I have other conversation designers on my team who have a background in um, you know, uh, graphical design mm -hmm. or in um, marketing or mm -hmm. in even nursing. Um, and I think all of those sort of lead themselves to bringing a different point of view to the table, yeah. which I think is actually really important when it comes yeah. to the conversational process. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love linguistics. I do. But linguistics itself, particularly sociolinguistics, um, is a very interdisciplinary field. Um, and if there's anything that I feel like I've learned from my work in linguistics, it's the idea that when you introduce or bring in a new concept or idea from an adjacent or potentially even seemingly unrelated field, that it can inform your analysis and your approach in a way that you may have never done mm -hmm. or expected before without it. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I, I think the same when it comes to conversation design, where, you know, 
you know, as a nurse in training, you learn about things like bedside manner and that informs your design process. Yeah. Or as a marketer, you learn about things like audience and that mm -hmm. informs your design process. And so I take those uh, into account as well when it comes to building out the team. I think probably the most important trait that I look for in a candidate or a conversation designer is an openness to language. Um, that's not something that is easy to teach. Um, I think, you know, sort of across different cultures and contexts, we're often sort of socialized uh, to perceive language as like how it should be versus how some, you know, other people use the language. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And that somehow it's okay to judge the way that other people use the language if they use it differently than mm -hmm. we do. Mm -hmm. um, when the reality is when you're creating a conversational product, you need to be able to train the bot in such a way that it can scale to all of those others rather than just your own conversational yeah, practice. Exactly, yeah. And so if you have a designer who is going to judge the way that another group of people communicate, that's essentially going to narrow your total addressable market. Because now all of a sudden it's harder for that population to use the chat bot or the voice assistant. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. so that's what I look for on the team is, you know, I can teach you the Einstein bot builder, but what I cannot do is like teach you how to think in a way yeah. that's open and yeah. inclusive when it comes to language variation.